Hello friends, welcome back to part three. Let's jump right back to the content. I don't have to introduce the videos every time, right? Uh, there's Loki. Uh, he's got his eyes open, but he's still curled up, resting some. Uh, I'll make sure he's still fitting in the Loki cam here. There you go. You can still see Loki without obstruction now. And uh, this was the tweet that we looked at in the most previous video at the end, so we'll scroll on down to the next one. And let's talk about my adjusted EBITDA forecast. Uh, so what is in my forecast and what is not in my forecast? Well, I don't have any autonomous robots. Tesla is working on those, and they might uh, be able to sell autonomous robots at some point. I don't have that in my forecast uh, at all. How about robo-taxi fares uh, using uh, Tesla's to autonomously, driverlessly uh, do ride-sharing services? I have no revenue in my forecast for that. Uh, but I do assume full self-driving is going to become more valuable as time passes because Tesla is going to keep improving it. It's going to keep getting better uh, and more capable and more people are going to become aware that it is a product that exists and works well. Uh, so that's what's in my forecast, uh, and that's the primary reason, apart from the volume of deliveries increasing over time, that my forecast for adjusted EBITDA rises uh, at this rate shown on the chart. Uh, so let's click on this and see the adjusted EBITDA by quarter forecast. So where are we? We're right here in Q1. There was this little dip here uh, sequentially versus Q4. This happens a lot from record Q4s. There's uh, often a pullback. You can see one here. You can see one here uh, from an all-time high to the Q1 that follows. Doesn't happen all the time. Uh, didn't happen last year in Q1 because the Shanghai lockdowns happened in Q2 of 2022 and brought this down. But it did happen here. Uh, Tesla had a lot of ending inventory uh, at the end of Q1 uh, as part of ending the wave. Uh, those are one-time impacts. Uh, it's only the amount that you're increasing the inventory by that impacts your working capital adversely. Uh, and negatively impacts your operating income because you have more inventory, finished goods inventory, at the end of the quarter instead of converting those into sales that become revenue, that becomes profit, and EBITDA is a profit metric. All right, so in the future, I've got EBITDA improving. So Tesla volumes are responsible for most of this improvement in the near term. And then over the long term, FSD revenue is the primary driver after the volume increases have happened. I'm going to skip down in my, in my uh, forecast. I'll cover all these charts, but I'm going to skip down to this one because you'll see a very similar thing happening with it. Uh, I caption this one. Here's a chart that underscores the point I made in tweet 5 of this thread, uh, which is why I'm showing it to you right now. These kind of go together. Maybe I should put them side by side in a future forecast thread uh, so I don't have to scroll around. Apart from volume, my forecast for future year's earnings growth is largely driven by more buyers opting to pay for FSD at higher prices as its features improve, but it's tricky to guess at timing. So this looks pretty extreme on this chart, the amount of growth that I'm expecting from where we were in Q1 of 2023. Now I should note, Every number on this chart is my guess because Tesla does not report how much FSD revenue they make at time of purchase. That isn't one of the numbers that gets uh, reported in the investor letter or in the 10Q. So we have to guess at how much we thought the FSD revenue was without ever finding out how close we were. These are my guesses. Uh, Tesla's FSD package used to be more popular when it cost less. Uh, Tesla used to charge seven grand for FSD, uh, and then eight grand, and then ten grand, and then more recently, it's like fifteen thousand dollars. That's a pretty big upgrade, uh, and fewer people are taking it. Uh, so the take rate is lower now than it was previously. Is my guess. Uh, reducing the revenue per vehicle sold at time of purchase. Um, and then 
in the future, more people are going to buy FSD because it's going to be a more capable system. It's not going to uh, require as many safety critical interventions in the future as it does today uh, because it's going to get scary good is my belief and the belief of others in the Tesla bull camp. Uh, and I might add the belief of the CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, uh, who has said that uh, FSD is going to get a lot better uh, in a big hurry. Now, people discount that because he thought that every year <laughs> for the past several years and is on the record publicly. I, this, this is not in dispute. Uh, Elon has said that FSD would be ready uh, for driverless uh, later this year, I think every year for the past five years, something like that. So it's a very hard problem and it's a problem that Tesla has had to change their approach to several times uh, to avoid a uh, local maximum, um, which is uh, a point of diminishing returns beyond which progress is very difficult. Uh, and a fundamental rethink is required. Hey, let's try a different approach and see if we can find one that, um, that doesn't bump up against an asymptote of system performance. Uh, so here's what's in my forecast for full self-driving revenue. However it gets there, it gets there. One way of describing this remarkable increase <laughs> that I have sitting in Q4, where the FSD revenue goes to $20,000 per car, is that FSD will be so good and so popular by then that Tesla will just stop making other order configs, right? So if the backlog for Teslas at this point is a year or two years, then what they might say is, well, we're just not going to make cars where the order doesn't have FSD on it. Uh, and that would explain how you would get to $20,000 per car worth of FSD revenue. Uh, if that's the price and if that's the only kind of car Tesla is selling at that point, that's how you get there. Am I open to revising this forecast? Yes, I revise my forecast uh, at least once per quarter, usually twice per quarter. Uh, I didn't revise it after the Q1 deliveries, uh, production and deliveries report came out because my production forecast was within 0.15%. And my deliveries forecast was also within 1%, like 0.8% uh, off. So I figured that was close enough to just leave it, and I did. But most of the time, I'll reforecast twice per quarter. Um, so that is what drives most of the profit growth that's in my forecast for 2024 and 2025 higher volumes and higher full self-driving revenue, which comes with no variable cost or immaterially low variable cost to sell one additional over-the-air software upgrade to FSD. One of the beauties of having a car company that uh, offers software upgrades is an extremely high profit margin once the fixed cost base is covered. And that's my video for today, so we'll check back in with Loki and see that he hasn't moved at all. And I will outro and say if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports me, and uh, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kishler and RebellionAir.com, and I'll see you in the next one.